What's the best way to train the emotional part of the brain? So, so that we are in, we have a personal power over it. That yeah, we're in that's control. A good way to like that, that we that we have, or uh, or, or more. Yeah, I mean, it depends can, on the situation. We can turn it up or turn it down, and we depending are on the, depending on the depending on the what's going on. Yeah, maybe we need to be a more emotional in a moment and not be chill and relaxed when yeah. there's an attack. Well, maybe the moment is so big, man. It's of course you're just emotionally yeah. over the top, and we know that's what's been going on the last couple of years and even today. So, but that but that leaves you a, a flexibility, and it also leaves you without feeling bad. Like, oh, yeah. I was emotional then. Now I'm not an emo- I, I'm not a person that has emotional regulation. You don't have this brain the same forever it's a constant trimming of the sails wow. modulating tone to me it's a little bit of work if you're in a good spot like hey don't this ain't guaranteed yeah but it's also so much power and opportunity that if you're if you're uh, not in a good spot like tomorrow can be better and if not tomorrow then the month or the year after right so emotional regulation um the shortcut so now we're getting to like is there a tip you know because mm-hmm. Uh, I hope people feel like, wait a second, this everything is possible, but it's going to take a lot of work. Okay, that's really what I was trying to get at for the first part. But are there shortcuts? Mm-hmm. Because I love shortcuts, with LA freeways or whatever. <laughs> right, ways uh, is good, yeah. <laughs> but there are there is one that has stood the test of time, and that I can now explain to you based on on things that we do as surgeons, uh, and that's. I refer to it as meditative breathing in, in in my first book, but really it's it's pacing your breath. And so, what does and that? This is do? something you study with actual right. uh, scans or no, no, no. It, it's even it's How wilder are you studying than that. This? If you have aberrant brain electricity, and we check a scan and there's some funky marble type tuft of brain tissue that doesn't look right, we know like that's the epicenter. That's where the that's where the electricity is sprouting from. But some people that have it, some kids that have it, some adults that have it, there isn't a, there isn't Spot. anything wrong with the scan, right? Yeah. The scan looks pretty, brain looks perfect, but the electricity's off, right? That's what epilepsy is, All right? That's yet seizures. another proof. Mm-hmm. Seizures. Yeah. One seizure, uh, two seizures is epilepsy, then you get the diagnosis. But yes, seizures is aberrant electrical acti- activity of the brain. The same mm-hmm. things we've been talking about. Um, so when we don't know where it's sprouting, uh, because if it's from a small space, we can dissect it out and take away the the epicenter, right? You can take the it. Orange. You mean you can cut take, it out? We can cut it out. Wow! And the patients are seizure free. Really? Yeah. Now, but what if there isn't a spot that we find and their seizures are horrible, and it's well before thinking about removing half the brain? So what they we would do is we make a reverse question mark incision. <laughs> It's just scalp. It's not very tender. Yeah, yeah. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Tell me under the ribs are more tender. Is yeah, what they sure. say, uh, patients. Then we make our little ice fishing hole. Take, are they are they numb when they're taking this? This, off? this, this for this work? one they're asleep. There's others that okay. are awake. Do you numb the skull, the skin? You just cut through the skin. No numbing. They're they're fully asleep. Oh, but when they're awake, then at the very end I inject the cut, so with, the numbing lasts the longest. With numbing, got gotcha, you. Yeah. yeah. Um, You're not just sitting there awake and they're just cutting it off. <laughs> that's, that is an operation we do, but that's a wow. different story. Yeah. The, so you take the skull off. Yeah. Uh, the brain has a covering. You don't see the brain right away. This is like a sheath. Um, like a, like like, a skin? Like no, a, it's like almost a nylon material. You can pick really? it up and stitch it. That's what keeps the water inside the skull. It's, the, it's not the bone. It's a sack. Yeah. Brain sack. There you go. It's a brain sack, right? It's like but a it's sack. nylon. It's pretty. And we cut it. And then... the clear water pours out, you can see the surface of the brain. And, and water's coming out. Yeah, because the brain is floating in an aquarium, right? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's buoyant. Your brain doesn't sit on bone, it's, it's floating. Again, jellyfish. In water. Mm. So when you're hitting, when you're having a lot of fast mm, actions brain. and you're hitting something, is it hitting? Yeah, your skull stops, and then inside it sloshes your, into the inside. That can't be good for you, is it? Well, that's where all the CTE and football stuff is the issue. Is and it's a sudden stops, repeated sudden stops, with the brain sloshing and hitting the inside surface of your skull. That can't be good, can it? Well, people are pretty, people get by, but we're seeing that if you do it too much, yeah. as with kids and NFL people, but, so you got it open, then there's a little, it's the size of a deck of a card. It's got a little 96 or different electrodes on it. You put the deck of the card on 
the naked brain. You take those wires, you pop them out with little needles through the back, almost like, like <laughs> crazy. yeah. And then you put the bone back on and you stitch up the scalp and then you put some numbing medicine and you, you put, put on a head wrap and they hang out in the hospital for weeks because you're waiting for the seizure you, to happen. So you've got a pad on the brain. Uh, a grid, so when the seizure sparks, we can see, uh, it was it was Shut like in up. Connect 4 or Battle, <laughs> Battle right. was, that, was that board game? <laughs> Battleship, Battleship yeah. yeah, it's in, it's in two. You know where it's at. Yeah, you know where it's at. Two six. Because that way you know where you're gonna. Dissect. So there's a there's a mesh uh, mm -hmm. pad, mm -hmm. electromagnetic pad or something that can track mm -hmm. with wires that mm -hmm. are coming out of the back of this. This connected to the monitor. That uh, are connected to the monitor at yeah. all times. Mm -hmm. And they're there for a couple weeks. <laughs> it's insanity. Because they're, and we're they're trying functional. to functional. They're happy. They're fine. They're like, like us, hanging out. Yeah. Let's give me some ice cream. Games. Play some video games. Watch some TV. So what happened was a bunch of the wires PhDs. coming out of their necks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the scalp. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. we have things. People, you know, you'd be surprised with what we can. You wrapped we, it up. You what kind of devices we put in and dangle from people? That's cool. like, you know, from broken legs, they come up with those little metal grids and they move around. So, so then after a few weeks, you you wait till a seizure happens, mm -hmm. and then we know where under that grid where it's where it sparked. We found the epicenter. And then from that, you track the data, you have the recording of the data, and then you can go in and then, yeah. what, tweak it, or are you? Remove, remove that little it. part. That's a, and then they're done, they don't have seizures anymore. Sometimes, wow. or they're reduced. Now here's something that's more interesting for, for you and your audience. Well, that's a boring couple of weeks, so a bunch of cognitive <laughs> science students and brain students and all, they come in and they started hanging out with them. And they said, hey, can we go through these lessons of paced breathing and meditative breathing. Uh -huh. Can we do this without no. removing it? Yeah. Well, completely unrelated to the clinical uh -huh. work, uh -huh. well, we're hanging. I've got a direct feed of the true electricity Ooh, from the surface of your naked while brain. While they're breathing. Yeah, let's, while they're sitting there. So they do something new with them. They teach them meditative breathing. Come on. What, is, what, is, what are you seeing on the, the brain activity recordings? The same thing that we see when we give Valium, which is an anxiolytic their anxiety level goes down, their electricity goes from fast to medium. Remember we started this? Uh -huh. And we're talking about athletes not wanting to be in fast, right. we want to be in the flow state. Meditative breathing led to direct changes in the electricity of their brain as measured, not with a sticker on the forehead, but with a grid on the surface of the naked brain. It's on true, the brain. It's true measurable changes in the electricity there for the mind. So meditative breathing that for thousands of years people have said can help you chill out, is an anxiolytic and break anxiety. Well, we have proof of that now. And I think that's important for people to know that it's not just some, you know, it's just not a concept that's being thrown around too casually that through awake, um, direct electrophysiologic recording of seizure planning surgery at elite centers, uh, while looking for the seizures, there's a lot of data coming out about, let, let's play video games, let's do meditative breathing, let's read, wow. and then what changes. And so that's what I love in book one that I shared was, that's raw data, that's real data, and there's an explanation behind how that happens. And so what I would say to people is, that's something you have that's free, because I'm not selling right. anything. Breathing. And the pace of breathing, and What's the pace that works best? I mean, there's lots of different techniques of meditative so breathing. I, they found, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, people say through your nose or mouth, and that's kind of the confusing stuff that's out there. Well, the nose and the mouth connect before they get to the trachea and it goes to your lungs. So it doesn't matter how, but it's about slowing the cadence and making the cadence more methodical. A deep breathing. you know, deep breath in and a deep breath out. It's no different than what we do in surgery when you feel the case getting a little out of your control. What do you do? Well, I, I first the first thing is, I just slow my breathing down. And that doesn't mean the solution will arise, but I know that puts me in my most calm wow. and focused state to find the solution for the problem in front of me. And yeah. likely that's what athletes that thrive do as well. You don't want your brain surgeon to be like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Like, but that's what stress does. It makes yeah, you hyperventilate, right? Absolutely. But if you just, that's that's a great point. If you just hyperventilate just because you're just doing it as just whatever, for whatever reason, you get physically jittery. Yeah. You will give yourself anxiety by just doing that. Yeah, I felt it just for a second. Well, I'm, I'm showing you the proof on the other side. Do the opposite of hyperventilation and you'll make yourself less frenetic. 
Will that solve your relationship problems? No. I'm not sure. <laughs> Will that make you not want to get in a fight with your boss? I'm not sure. But you should know that that puts you at your most in command of your emotions, your mm -hmm. emotional regulation. That's a great, great Gosh. question. But what if there isn't a spot that we find and their seizures are horrible and it's well before thinking about removing half the brain? So what they we would do is we make a reverse question mark incision. Mm. It's just scalp, it's not very tender. Yeah, yeah. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Tell me under the, ribs are more tender yeah, is what I'm they sure. say, uh, patients. Then we make our little, I 